Hey guys, and in this video, let's talk about how you can take better time lapse with your GoPro. And it doesn't matter whether you already have one or you are just starting out. I prepared a bunch of useful information, so check this out. So in this video, we're gonna focus about how to take a better time lapse when it comes to sunset or sunrise. Hey guys, if you are new to this channel, then my name is Tomas Nowatsky and if you want to learn more about GoPro, see some tips, tricks or maybe reviews, then subscribe to my channel. So first of all, what is a time-lapse? Time-lapse is a static motion of something that's moving in the frame, whether it's gonna be clouds, sun, people, cars, you name it. And with your GoPro, you can take stunning time-lapses all made whether within the camera, when, if you take time-lapse video, or you can take a bunch of photos if you cho choose a time-lapse photo mode. But first of all, let's take a look at some basics. What you need to have is uh, any sort of a tripod, um, and it doesn't matter whether it's gonna be a heavy duty, a small tripod, as long as it's gonna make your camera stable and steady, it's gonna work its job. I prepared a couple of examples what I'm, I'm currently using, so perhaps you can take a look at it. So your GoPro can actually record uh, a time-lapse video or a time-lapse photo mode. And the difference between is that uh, time-lapse video is going to be entirely done within a camera. As soon as you hit stop button, uh, your video is going to be ready. And when it comes to time-lapse photo mode, it gives a little bit more freedom for you if you want to edit um, your time-lapse in post-production. But as a result, you end up with a bunch of hundreds of photos which you have to st stitch together in um, some software. Now, Hero 8 Black can record also nightlapse video mode. So let me compare a nightlapse video versus a timelapse video and see the difference between it. And let's stop here for a moment, take a look at uh, a photo from time-lapse video and a photo from night-lapse video and see that there is a lot of grain when it comes to uh, time-lapse video because there isn't simply enough light for the camera to, uh, to produce a clear picture. So I would strongly suggest whenever you do sunset or sunrise, always try to go with uh, night-lapse video or night-lapse photo in this case. Okay, but uh, what kind of interval should you choose for your time-lapse? Because there are a lot of uh, settings to choose from. You can set it to 2 seconds, 5 seconds, 15, or maybe an hour. Uh, there, there is plenty. So I prepared three time-lapses recorded at the same time for three different cameras. One is recording in 2 seconds, the other one is recording in 5 seconds, and another one is recording in 10 second interval. So you can see the difference between it.
obviously which interval you're gonna choose entirely depends on um, what you are going to shoot. For example, if you are going to do a time lapse of clouds, you want to go, for example, with 10 seconds, maybe five, or maybe 15 if you want to record it for a longer time. Just play with the settings and see what works for you the best. When it comes to sunsets, my go-to settings most of the time is five second interval. Hey, and now let's take a look at ProTune settings. All right, so we are in time-lapse mode in both Hero 8 Black and the Hero 7 Black. And now let's go to ProTune. Okay, so quickly to go, let's go to ProTune. All right, and as you guys see on Hero 7 Black, you are very limited because you only have resolution, field of view and interval. And this is all that you can basically set uh, in Hero 7 Black. Now with Hero 8 Black, you not only have resolution, lens and interval, but also you have access to ProTune. So you can choose between EV compensation, white balance, minimum and maximum ISO, sharpness, GoPro color and so on and so forth. So Hero 8 Black gives us much more control over the end result of your, of your video. The same thing goes with Night Labs. We have access to ProTune as well. A small tip guys, always record in the highest resolution possible, in this case 4K. And the reason behind it is because you can move or zoom in or zoom out uh, your footage uh, as long as you record it in a higher resolution. Thomas, what are, what are we talking about? Let me show you. So recording in a higher resolution gives you that little bit more flexibility, gives you that little bit more room to for an error. You can compose your shot a little bit. You can move your frame if you need to. Uh, it's simply there is simply no downside other than um, just a bigger file size. Another small tip, guys. I would strongly suggest you download uh, an application called Sun Position or Sun Path because that's gonna allow you to actually predict where you can expect. Uh, to see a sunrise or uh, where the sun gonna go for the sunset. It's also very important to record a sunset or sunrise um, during a cloudy day. Let me show you how boring it looks like uh, when uh, there is a completely clear sky, there's uh, no clouds whatsoever, and it's simply boring. Now, please compare it with a sunset with dramatic sky. Wow, I mean, the difference is so huge. That's why I always um, only do sunset or sunrises um, when there is at least like a cloudy day because uh, there is some movement, there is some action going on. And when there is a clear sky and the sun is just... Uh, I, th I think we get the point. All right, <laughs> thank you guys for watching this video. I know it was very long, but and I tried to explain it uh, as short as possible. Uh, as always, guys, if you like this video and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then please do so, as that's gonna help me um, build up this channel more and more single, uh, every single day. And uh, as always, give a thumb up to this video and see you guys in the next one.